The student rode home on her bicycle and disappeared without a trace. The police began searching, but none of them could even imagine what alarming discoveries awaited them. In just a few days, so many shocking details emerged in this case that even experienced FBI agents were horrified, and none of them expected such an ending. Sierra Giffen was born on February 11, 1996 in the small American city of Delder, Ohio. The girl grew up in a very large and friendly family. She had two sisters and two brothers. Sierra loved to play sports and was on the school volleyball team. She also loved to travel. The girl dreamed of visiting Italy and made a lot of efforts to realize this desire until she finally managed to go there. While studying, she started dating a guy named Josh. After graduating from school, they entered different universities. Despite the distance, she and Josh planned to continue dating and made plans for the future. After two years of studying at the university, the girl went to her hometown for the summer holidays. At that time, she still had some work to do with her studies, but she decided to do it from home in order to spend more time with her family and her boyfriend. In addition, Sierra also interned at her uncle's company. At that time, she was already 20 years old and the girl was thoroughly preparing to work there after graduating from university. On July 19, 2016, Sierra decided to drive to her boyfriend's house. She had bought a new bike a few days earlier and was eager to try it out. The girl left the house at approximately 5 p.m. and headed to Josh's. Around 9 p.m., her mother returned home and found that her daughter was not there. This seemed a little strange to her. She thought that Sierra should have arrived back by now, but it was summer outside, and it was just starting to get dark outside. In addition, the girl was already 20 years old, and the mother did not worry about this. She allowed her daughter to stay at the guy's house. However, everything changed when Josh called her at 11 p.m. He asked if Sierra was home because the guy couldn't reach her. According to the young man, they separated at about 7 in the evening and since then she has not been in touch. Considering that more than three hours had passed since then, the girl's mother began to seriously worry. Together with Josh, they began calling the girl's friends and relatives, hoping that she had stopped by to see one of them. But that evening no one saw her. Then my mother called all the nearby hospitals, but no one like her was admitted there either. As a result, the woman decided to contact the police and around midnight she filed a missing person report. Despite the fact that Sierra was 20 years old, the police immediately began searching. Considering that Josh was the last one to see her, they headed towards him. The guy said the girl arrived at his house shortly after 5 p.m. After about an hour and a half, they decided to go for a ride together. Sierra rode her bike. Josh rode his motorcycle. The couple drove along country roads along numerous cornfields. Josh even took a photo of Sierra on her bike, and the girl posted it on social media. After driving around for a while, they decided to go their separate ways. Sierra and Josh separated about a kilometer from her house. The guy rode back on a motorcycle, and she headed home on a bicycle. While officers spoke with the youth, other officers drove around the area looking for Sierra. They headed towards the road near which the girl began her journey home alone, and soon they managed to discover the first alarming tip. Driving along the road along the fields, one of the officers saw that the corn stalks in one place were strongly pressed down, as if someone was making their way through them. He walked there with a flashlight, and after a few meters he saw Sierra's bicycle. Having examined him, the policeman saw traces of blood. Next to the bicycle was a woman's sock, which also had blood stains on it. He reported this discovery to his colleagues, and soon other police officers arrived at the scene. During a more thorough inspection, several more things were found near the bicycle. These were men's sin glasses, a screwdriver, and several car fuses. No less interesting was the fact that there were tracks from motorcycle tires leading to the bicycle through the cornfield. All this was enough for investigators to come to the disappointing conclusion that Sierra was most likely abducted. When the case took a serious turn, 
they began to look closely at Josh as a possible suspect. Firstly, according to statistics, it is close people who most often turn out to be criminals. Second, that evening Josh was riding his motorcycle next to Sierra's bike. In addition, detectives wondered why the guy did not accompany the girl home. She had less than a kilometer left, and he was on a motorcycle, and in any case could quickly return home. Josh allowed the police to search his house, car, and motorcycle. And here the police came across his work overalls, which had visible traces of blood. The young man said that he wore these clothes while hunting, and that the blood belonged to animals. Investigators handed over the overalls to an expert, who quickly confirmed that he was telling the truth. Otherwise, there was nothing to indicate Josh's involvement. Experts also examined the objects found in the field, and extracted one DNA sample from them that belonged to an unknown person. Josh immediately volunteered his sample, and they didn't match. As a result, he was no longer considered a suspect, and the police began searching for other leads. The next day they received a call from the farmer. The man said that on the evening of Sierra's disappearance, he was driving under that very road with his son. At some point, they noticed a motorcycle helmet on the side of the road, and the father told his son to bring it to the car. The farmer later examined it more closely and saw traces of blood on it, after which he contacted the police. Detectives admitted that the helmet could belong to the thief, but his identity still remained a mystery. At that time, the FBI had already become involved in the case, and the agents decided to carefully study the photograph of Sierra that Josh had taken shortly before her disappearance. Thanks to the photo, they knew what clothes she was wearing, but detectives noticed something else. The girl had a fitness bracelet on her wrist. They immediately requested the geolocation data of this device. But here the investigators were met with failure. The device was turned off shortly after Sierra disappeared. Following this, the police received another tip. Josh told them that while he and his girlfriend were driving down the road, a suspicious white van followed them. The guy got the feeling that the driver was following them. The car was driving at a slow speed, and slowed down as the couple slowed down. At one point, Josh even tried to drive up to him, but the driver drove away. The guy thought it was strange, and he even remembered part of his license plate number. Police quickly found a vehicle and its owner. She turned out to be a woman, and the detective determined that she had nothing to do with this crime. In a conversation with them, she herself accused Josh of trying to drive up to her and push her off the road. As a result, investigators decided that there was simply a misunderstanding between them, and continued to look for new leads. Several days have passed since Sierra's disappearance, but the police have not been able to find any additional evidence. Then they decided to go through all the residents who had previously been convicted of violent crimes and lived in nearby communities. While sorting through the lists of these people, they immediately paid attention to one person, 57-year-old James All. He lived just a few kilometers from the field where Sierra's bicycle was found. The reason why he attracted such interest from the police was very simple. James was convicted of kidnapping a girl in the 90s. She was riding her bike when suddenly a man ran over her with his van. Threatening her with a screwdriver, he tried to force the girl to get into the car. But she managed to escape. Given that Sierra had disappeared while riding her bike, and a screwdriver was found nearby, police quickly suspected James of kidnapping her. Investigators went to him to check this version. The man was clearly unhappy with this visit, and stated that he had not killed anyone. However, he voluntarily allowed the officer to inspect his home. James and his mother lived on a 120-acre farm, and on this vast territory there were many different buildings. It took detectives a long time to examine them all. During this process, James repeatedly told officers that he did not kidnap Sierra and only learned about the case from the news. This behavior began to seem strange to them. The man literally repeated the same thing over and over again, but then something more interesting awaited them. Suddenly, James stated that on the evening of Sierra's disappearance, he was just driving along that road, 
and his motorcycle stalled near the very place where the police later found the girl's bicycle. According to James, he saw her bike and decided to get closer, so he headed into the field pushing his motorcycle nearby. A man added that while he was walking there, his car fuses, sunglasses, screwdriver, and helmet fell out. Suddenly his motorcycle started up again, and James rode on, forgetting to pick up all these items. As you might have guessed, the detectives were very suspicious of this story. In addition, just a few hours earlier, a witness had approached them and said that on the evening of Sierra's disappearance, he had seen a strange van on that road. The witness drew attention to him because the car was driving at a very high speed, violating all possible rules. He remembered his number and passed this information on to the police. After checking the number, detectives learned that the van belonged to James, and during the search, they noticed him near the house. The men also allowed them to examine the van, and the police found something interesting. Inside was a ski mask, tape, plastic zip ties, handcuffs and mace. These objects in themselves did not indicate his guilt in any way. However, given James' criminal record for kidnapping, such a set raised suspicion among investigators. But the most terrible discoveries awaited them in one of the barns. Detectives found a separate room there with a hidden door containing an air mattress. Next to him were chains that looked like they were meant to hold a person in this room. There was a refrigerator near the mattress, inside of which police found traces of blood. There was also a strong smell of bleach, which led them to the conclusion that they had carefully tried to clean up the blood. But the main evidence was the contents of a small box. There were brass and several pairs of women's underwear, one of which had blood on it. All this was enough to at least temporarily arrest James while experts studied the collected evidence. The man was taken for interrogation and asked to explain what the secret room with blood and chains was. In response to this, James gave them another dubious story. He said he made this room because he wanted to set up his own studio for filming adult material. So this was just his makeshift film set. Of course, the detectives didn't believe his words. The room looked like it was originally made to hold people against their will. However, they were still unable to link him to Sierra's disappearance or locate her. But everything changed on the third day after her disappearance. After a lengthy search, police discovered a freshly dug grave in one of the fields containing Sierra's body. There were handcuffs on her hands. She was also wearing an adult diaper. Medical experts determined that the victim died from strangulation, but they were unable to establish even an approximate time of death, and they did not find any signs of violence. Around the same time, forensic scientists were actively studying all the evidence collected in James's barn. They found female DNA on one of the pieces of tape lying next to the mattress, and it matched Sierra's DNA. Police also obtained geolocation data from James' smartphone. It turned out that on the evening of the girl's disappearance he spent almost two hours near that place. They received another disturbing piece of evidence from a psychologist whom James had been assigned by the court for a previous kidnapping, according to him during one of the sessions. James said that he learns from his mistakes with each new abduction, and next time he is going to bury the body. Apparently, the psychologist decided not to tell the police about her client's disturbing statements, and did so only after he was accused of murder. With this set of evidence, detectives formed the most likely chronology of events. Apparently, that evening, James spotted Sierra on the road, had her with his helmet, and dragged her and her bicycle into a field. Based on his geolocation data, the man sat there until the sun set. During this time, he called his brother and said that his motorcycle had broken down. Apparently in this way he hoped to create an alibi for himself. As soon as it got dark outside, James drove home, got into the van with the motorcycles, and returned to the field. He picked up Sierra and took her to his barn. At that time, the girl was either unconscious or shackled. Only James knew what happened next. Apparently, he mocked the victim for some time and then killed her and buried her in a field. 
Experts only assumed that the victim could have been there for all three days. The man himself continued to deny all these accusations, and the case was sent to court. The process began in March 2018. The prosecution provided additional evidence that further pointed to his guilt. It turned out that the key to the handcuffs on the victim's hands was found on James' keychain. His lawyers decided to stick with the theory that James simply wanted to set up an adult film studio in his barn. In addition, they never provided any adequate arguments in favor of their client's innocence. The trial was completed in less than a month, and on March 28, the jury found him guilty. As a result, James received a death sentence, with execution scheduled for May 20, 2025. Of course, for the detectives, the story was far from over. Given everything they learned about this man, the police were sure that James had committed similar crimes before, but he managed to avoid responsibility. Investigators are still working on his case, trying to link the unsolved disappearances to James but have not yet brought any concrete results.